Was life easier for previous generations? Do teenagers today have a bright future to look forward to, or have they inherited a world more competitive than that of their parents? What do teenagers today spend all day doing? Is a life connected to a handheld device beneficial to today's teenagers, or would they be happier in an unconnected world? Today we'll be looking into the life of modern teenagers and seeing how they spend their time, what they enjoy doing, and how their development could well be hindered by today's rapid lifestyle in this episode of the Infographic Show, Most Common Traits of Today's Teenagers. Let's first look at the psychology of teenagers and how it develops. So, little Johnny grows up, and around the age of 13, that sweet little smile disappears. He begins to frown and become isolated. If you look close enough at the temples on his head, you might be able to see tiny little horns begin to grow. Johnny seems to be, to his parents' horror, turning into a little monster. Teenagers develop a streak of independence, and parents often find it hard to reach out and relate to them. They are becoming their own person. This is a completely natural part of human evolution that we all experience. The problem is, teenagers are still, for the most part, reliant on their parents. They need their parents for food and shelter, for their education, and for their day-to-day -day expenses. So although a fierce independence is a teenage trait, in a practical sense, they are still usually being cared for. This creates conflict, and teenagers are normally always experiencing some type of conflict. Teenagers often withdraw into their own space and construct a world whereby they are alone and independent. Nobody, apart from some close friends, really understands them. Nobody has ever experienced the feelings that they are feeling. Teens rely more heavily on their own decisions rather than the advice of their elders trying to learn how to think and act for themselves for the first time. They find they have separate goals from their parents, their peers, and their teachers, and often isolate themselves with their own thoughts, feelings, and ambitions. Teenagers also begin to take more risks as they grow up. No longer will they need to hold their parents' hand while crossing the road or have a book read to them. Oh no, those years are long behind them. Again, this is to do with evolution. Dr. Paul Mardiquet, author of the book The Teenage Brain, observes that the brain of a teenager is not yet fully developed, particularly within the frontal lobes. These lobes are the areas of the brain responsible for decision-making and the weighing up of potential consequences following dangerous activity. Even the most well-balanced teen will have a tendency to behave in ways that seem odd or risky to their elders. But then again, many adults also act in ways that may seem bizarre and risky to a teenager. During the early high school years, kids generally become more extroverted. They begin to establish closer friends within their peer groups rather than their parents. Even teenagers who are naturally introverted will experience a developmental stage in their teens when communication and interaction seem like the most important things in the world. By doing this, teenagers are preparing for early childhood and a time in the future when personal relationships are essential for work and family life. Parents should be willing to let their teenage children spend time with their friends, but monitor who those friends are. Teenagers begin to experience new emotions as they develop. Hormones flood through their body, meaning that they will begin to consider romantic attachments for probably the first time in their lives. Mostly this is harmless flirting online, or perhaps a crush on a celebrity. Sometimes these hormones might lead to early romantic attachments and to coupling with members of their preferred sex. This may be harmless enough, or could lead to unwanted pregnancy and a lifetime commitment that neither teenager is equipped emotionally to deal with, having just left childhood themselves. Parents can't control their children's chemistry, so instead they should educate them on the dangers of early parenthood. But what do teenagers like to do? A family technology education nonprofit group called Common Sense Media surveyed 2,600 youths as recently as November 2015. Their census shows that teens are spending over a third of their average day, or nine hours, online using social media, watching videos, or listening to music. The survey also showed that teenagers are multitasking. For example, they may be listening to music online while shopping or while traveling to and from school. Teens from lower income backgrounds tend to use online media more often on average in comparison with those teens with higher income families. The 2010 Kaiser Family Foundation study estimated that teenagers are online for eight hours a day. According to a 2015 survey by Piper Jaffrey, teens also do a fair amount of shopping online with over 60% of teens saying that they prefer to buy clothes over the internet rather than visiting the store and trying on the garments first. Each generation in history is molded not only by their parents' views on the world, but also partly by social, political, cultural, and economic factors. Today's teenagers are among the first whose entire lives has existed with cell phone technology and social media. Psychologist Jean Twenge put this new generation under the microscope in her book, iGen, 
Today's super connected kids are growing up less rebellious, more tolerant, less happy, and completely unprepared for adulthood, and what that means for the rest of us. That's quite a mouthful. After looking into a number of national surveys of 11 million teenagers since the 1960s, she concludes that iGens, or modern teens, have a poorer state of mental health in comparison with previous generations. New media causes anxiety, loneliness, and panic disorders, along with sleep loss, according to Dr. Twenge. She comes to these conclusions by pointing to figures displaying national rises in mental health problems among teens and drawing parallels with the increase in cell phones. But what Twenge forgets to mention in her book is that correlation doesn't mean causation. As we mentioned before, teenagers are more sensitive to the world around them due to natural changes in hormone and brain activity, so this could be an equally good explanation as to why mental health problems are on the rise in teens. And then we factor in the larger general awareness of mental health issues, due in part to information on the internet. We also tend to diagnose mental illness earlier nowadays owing to our better understanding of these conditions. Twenge also explains in her book that teenagers are spending less time with their friends in person, and this is difficult to dispute when we look at the alleged six hours a day spent on the cell phone. But can this time, if used to chat on social media, really be described as time actually spent alone? And how healthy is this kind of interaction? Teens might be growing up at a slower rate than before. One theory, known as life history theory, postulates that the rate in which teens grow up is in direct correlation with how hostile their immediate environment is, or at least their perception of their environment. So in this theory, a teen growing up in a war-stricken country would, if he survived, be more likely to marry and become a parent at a younger age. If the environment is perceived to be hostile, teens employ a fast life strategy to grow up more rapidly and create larger families to form larger survival groups. On the other side of the coin, a slow life strategy, where the environment is perceived less hostile, gives rise to a slower rate of development. And this might explain why teens are not rushing to buy that car, get married, and have kids as quickly as they did in previous generations. So, what do you think are the most common traits of teenagers today? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to watch our other video called Google vs. Facebook. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!